Good morning, YouTubers. It's Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things. And we're back with another 2004 Vintage Military MRE review. Before we get started with examining today's menu, we have a little leftover business from last time, and that is to draw the winner in our 300 subscriber giveaway. So, let's do that. I'm going to switch over to the YouTube random winner picker random comment picker and we'll see who wins alright so here we have the YouTube random comment picker and we're gonna paste the URL for our video in which the giveaway was announced in this box right here under number one and we'll press the big button right here to find out who the winner is so here we go drum roll please and the winner is pop up okay have to check and see if he wanted any more knives. I think he made a comment said he had enough knives. We'll check and see. All right, let's scroll down the comments here. And here's Pop-Up's comment. Let's zoom in on that. And he says, I'll stay out of this one. I've already got too many knives. So, that means we have to draw again. So stand by. Okay, here we are on the random comment picker again. Same URL. And we'll push the big start button. Sam's World of Rations. Congratulations. Sam's World of Rations. You have won your choice of the two giveaway items that were featured in my last video. I'll contact you on your website or on your YouTube page and find out how to get that item to you. Once again, congratulations to Sam's World of Rations. Honorary woohoo for you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with today's review. 2004 Military MRE, menu number two, pork rib by the Warnick Company in McAllen, Texas. Menu number two consists of the main course pork rib, side dishes of clam chowder, cheese spread, wheat snack bread, cookie, beverage base powder, hot sauce, accessory packet A, spoon, and flameless ration heater. Accessory packet A contains coffee, sugar, creamer, salt, chewing gum, matches, and toilet tissue and the ever popular wet nap hand cleaner. So let's get started and open this baby up. For today's peelable seal opener, we've chosen mechanical means if this doesn't work by hand, which it never does, for me anyway. So to further congratulate our winner, Sam's World of MREs, I'm going to use the knife that he chose the Coleman Camp Knife as our peelable seal opener. Uh, 
as you can see, it deftly slices through both layers of the pouch without any trouble whatsoever. Once again, the Coleman Camp Knife. Alright, let's see what this envelope gives birth to. Here we go. The contents out onto the tray here. This is probably the main, no it's not, this is the uh, side dish, clam chowder. <clears throat> clam chowder, and the packing date on that is the 272nd day of 2004. <clears throat> Next we have, this has got to be the cookie, yep it says creamsicle cookie. I've never had that one before. Creamsicle cookie, I have no idea what's in that. See if we can discern a packing date on it. Oh, okay, there it is. Two hundred and seventy ninth day of two thousand and four. Here's accessory packet A, and we have liquid Tabasco sauce in the packet this time. See the little bottle in there. Chewing gum, sugar, toilet tissue, wet wipe, Taster's Choice Instant Coffee, Creamer, and the ever popular white tip matches. May or may not open this accessory packet up as we go along. And here's the ubiquitous MRE plastic spoon. We're going to set that aside. That'll go in the camping admin box. Beverage base powder today is orange flavored. With a packing date of the 274th day of 2004. By the way, accessory packet A, 321st day of 2004. Wheat snack bread. There's supposed to be two slices in there, or two pieces. 286th day of 2004. Cheese spread. Just plain this time, not jalapeno. And the 274th day of 2004 is what's labeled on there. is what this may be. Wheat snack bread. I thought we already saw wheat snack bread. What was this other thing? Oh, this must be the second piece of it. I thought they were going to have two pieces in one envelope, but I guess not. 286th day of 2004, which matches the other one. Exactly. Here's our flameless ration heater. This has a date of 309th day of 2004, and you might be able to see it on the bottom there. And our entree imitation boneless pork rib, uh, similar to probably to what Mickey D's has on, when they have those on their sandwiches, which are pretty good, by the way. I happen to enjoy those. All right, so we're going to unpack that and get that out on this newly purchased steel mess tray. Finally found one. Say goodbye to the OD green plastic tray. We'll be right back with you. Stand by. Alrighty then. Doesn't that look like fun? And once again, this Tabasco sauce, which I'm not going to use or open, but it is liquid. On a couple of these meals, I've found that to be just kind of like a dried up little pellet of reddish brown material in the bottom of the bottle. And this bottle, however, is full of liquid. We're going to set that aside and we'll use it later. Today, for our orange beverage powder, 
we have our GSI glacier cup and this is only a single wall cup so it doesn't hold heat or cold quite as well as the double wall cup we're used to using. We have some cold water here and I'm going to mix this up right off the bat. Let's see half a canteen cup which I think it says is 12 ounces of water so that's what we'll put in there. Might put a little bit less so that it tastes better depending on how it looks when it comes out. There we go. Nice and powdery. I'll find dust coming out of there as I shook that. 12 ounces of water. This thing holds 16. I'm going to put about half of it in there because I don't want that to be too weak tasting. I can smell the orange smell from here. It's an artificial orange flavor smell, which is exactly what you'd expect from these beverage based powders. Looks like it's clearing up a little bit. Gonna let that stand. For convenience sake, I'm gonna remove the contents of the accessory packet, which I laid out here just for display, and we'll get right back with you. Just by way of showing them a little closer, here's the lighthouse toilet tissue. It can also be used for a napkin. I wouldn't use it for both at the same time. Here's the matches, white tip, I'll strike one just to prove that they work after 14 years. Okay, so that's that. Tabasco sauce, gum looks nice and shiny, the coating looks fresh, and the tablets are not stuck together. 4 gram packet of Domino Sugar, Moist Towelette for hand cleansing, Taster's Choice Freeze Dried Coffee, Iodized Salt, and Non-Dairy Creamer. Back in the packet and we'll set that aside. Today we're going to try to use the Flameless Ration Heater. I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to put both the pouches in there, the main course pouch, the beef rib or riblet, and the clam chowder, which seems like kind of a strange combination to me. But whoever thought this menu up must have thought it was pretty good. Whether they ever actually tried it or not is another story. So again, we're going to pull the heating unit out just a little bit. This is the riblet pouch. I'm going to put that on top. Once again, it doesn't want to fit real good. size of the envelope or the pouch that the riblet is in just almost exactly matches the interior diameter of the packet for the flameless ration here. A tight fit, so these. I'll pull that heating element out again so I can put the clam chowder envelope in there. It fits a little bit better. Riblet did. So here we have our favorite spider gun, an airsoft model of um, a Stoger. Does it say Stoger? Stringer, anyway. Um, 
this is going to be our rock or something. And unfortunately it's going to be out of view of the camera. So let's add some water to the do not overfill line. And I think we made it almost exactly. Fold this over. Stick it into the biggest box we have, which is the one that the clam chowder came in. Make sure it's working. Have a pan of boiling water standing by, as always, in case this flameless ration heater decides that its better days are behind it. There's no gas escaping from that at all, so I'm thinking it's a no-go. Sometimes these work and sometimes they don't. Well, I listened to it up real close and it is fizzling in there, so we'll give it a chance anyway for 15 minutes. Put it over here on our rock or something. And let's try a little of the orange beverage paste. Cheers. That's pretty good, and I'm glad that I didn't put the full 12 ounces of water in there. Because it's just about right with 8 ounces. Okay, so while the main courses are heating up, let's take a look at this creamsicle cookie and find out what's going on inside there. Comes out in one piece. smell test. Doesn't smell stale. It smells kind of orangey a little bit. We'll take a little bite of that here in a while. <clears throat> Let's open up our snack bread. Probably only going to open one of these because I'm not a big fan of bread anyway so if I won't eat really nice bread Certainly I'm not going to be a fan of eating military snack bread a lot. So there it is. See it's got a lot of holes in it. Has kind of a odor of molasses maybe or something like that. If you've ever had rusket flakes or malto meal, it smells kind of like they do. Not too bad though, I don't, it doesn't smell stale. It doesn't smell off-putting in the least. And here's why the infamous do not eat oxygen absorbing shelf stable chip. Okay, the cheese spread. I'm gonna take a couple of minutes off camera and knead this really well so the oil spread around. And we'll check that out in just a minute. And while we're waiting, might as well have a taste of this cream sickle cookie. So it breaks pretty easily, not terribly crumbly. There's some orange business in there, I don't know what that is. It smells good, it smells like a creamsicle. If anybody's familiar with what those are, it's a vanilla ice cream bar with orange on the outside, I believe. So let's try it, here's to your health. Very crunchy. Tastes just fine. I'm going to get another second opinion on that while we're waiting. I'll be back shortly. So the second opinion is in and it's pronounced numb. Okay, so let's have some more cheese on the wheat snack bread. This is pretty good. As I say, the snack bread is very dry. So the cheese adds just the right amount of texture and moisture to what otherwise would turn your mouth into a 
dry desert. These uh, wheat snack bread portions are pretty generous, really. In honor of my buddy Polly over in England, we're going to make a cheese buddy. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel, Polly's MRE Review and Things. There we go, cheese buddy. And we'll get a second opinion on that as well. Cheese buddy, second opinion on that is tasteless except for the cheese spread. All right, we're going to pause a little while, make sure that the main course riblet is completely heated up and also the clam chowder. So we'll be back in 10-15 minutes to you. It'll just seem like a couple of seconds. Stand by. Well, the MRE heater, the FRH, is doing its thing still. I just turned it over so it get equal warming on both sides. And I think while we're waiting, we'll have a little bit more of the snack bread and cheese spread. Top that off with another piece of this creamsicle cookie. Mm -mm -mm. I have to say the cookie is more tasty than the snack bread and cheese, but they're still both good. I recommend both of them. Thumbs up on both. All right, let's find out if the FRH heated those pouches. Ooh, pretty hot. Heated those pouches up too hot enough or whether we have to put them in some boiling water for a while. Yow! Tell you right now that just handling outside of this thing is really smoking hot. I'm wondering if I might do myself a favor and let them just go ahead and absorb some more of that heat. Back in the box, back on the rock or something, and uh, have another bite of this cookie. All for the good of the order. While we've been waiting for this two pouch FRH to heat up, I thought I'd take a look at the ingredients in this imitation boneless pork rib. Pork, water, tomato powder, salt, dextrose, sugar, sodium tripolyphosphate, Worcestershire sauce powder, which contains sugar, sodium, diacetate, salt, dextrose, corn syrup, solids, spice, citric acid, caramel powder, dehydrated garlic and onion, cellulose gum, malic acid, natural powder, and then there's onion powder, soybean oil, smoke flavor, grill flavor, which comes from maltodextrin, flavor from partially hydrogenated cottonseed and soybean oil, modified corn starch, corn syrup solids, and flavorings. Yeah, that's what there is in an imitation pig, I guess. 
<coughs> because that's what's in the imitation pork rib. 230 calories, 21 grams of fat, 7 grams of saturated fat, 50 milligrams of cholesterol, 440 milligrams of sodium, 1 milligram carbohydrate, no dietary fiber, 1 gram of sugar, and 10 grams of protein, 2% of vitamin A, and 4% of iron. So essentially, there's some calories in there and not much else. But we're going to taste test it here in a few minutes. That was for the pork rib. We can take a look at the packet of clam chowder and see what's in that. Ingredients, water, clams, which are sea clams, sea clam juice, salt, sodium, tripolyphosphate, and calcium, disodium, EDTA, dehydrated potatoes, potatoes, sodium, acid, pyrophosphate, cream powder, cream, lecithin, BHA, modified food starch, powdered vegetable shortening, maltodextrin, corn syrup, solids, modified food starch, partially hydrogenated soybean oil, titanium dioxide, xanthan gum, sodium caseinate, dipotassium phosphate, sodium sterile, lactylate, dihydrated, dehydrated onions, dehydrated celery, salt, and spice. So that's, that's the way mom used to make it with all those chemicals, just like home. Clam chowder, yum yum, better living through chemistry. 140 calories, 5 grams of fat, or 6 grams of fat, 3 grams of saturated fat, 30 milligrams of cholesterol, 370 milligrams of sodium, total carbohydrate 13 grams, dietary fiber less than 1 gram, sugar 3 grams, protein 7 grams, vitamin A 6 gram, uh, percent rather, calcium 6 percent, vitamin C 0, iron 35 percent. Well there you have it, whole chemical factory in a box. All right, so we finished off the cookie, which was two thumbs up. And the snack bread with cheese spread on it, again, two thumbs up. Time to take these out of the FRH envelope and see if they're hot enough to open and eat. If not, there'll be another pause while we put them in boiling water. And as usual, it's hard to put this open. Say that's pretty hot, but I'd like a little. Ooh, it's hot. I'd like it a little hotter though. Not much. It couldn't be much hotter. And come from an FRH. Not going to use this envelope again, so it'll make it easier to get that out. So, I'm going to pop these into the boiling water for just a few minutes, maybe five or ten. Notice that even though it's been heated up, the vacuum packaging wrinkles appear still to be intact. This one didn't have any to, to begin with. I don't detect any food smell at all from that. So we'll see what it looks like when it comes out of the water. So, back in a few. Here come the meal pouches from the boiling water. That is the beet, or the pork riblet, and that is the clam chowder. And we'll sniff and taste, and we'll see if they look like, or smell like, or taste like. They're still good. My experience with this batch of 2004 vintage MREs has been pretty good on balance. I haven't gotten sick yet. There's been a couple of things I didn't eat because they didn't smell right. My alternate pouch opener. And here it comes, okay.
Now, on first sniff, that smells pretty good. It smells all right. I don't know what's up with the gravy here. We'll give it a little tiny taste. And when I say tiny, I mean tiny. Kind of bland. A little salty. Now, this is a little bigger than what you get at McDonald's when you buy one of those McRib sandwiches. I'm going to try a piece of it. It's obviously made from ground up meat and probably other things. Here we go. Kind of a smoky flavor, pretty subdued smoky flavor, but it's there. Texture is sort of like hamburger. Um, it's not the consistency of a single piece of meat, but it's obviously ground up and formed into the shape it is. It's edible, not extremely tasty. I give it one thumb up out of two. Okay. Now for the clam chowder. Don't smell anything around that pouch. Didn't see any obvious defects in the pouch. And when I poked the knife in it, it didn't squirt or outgas any particular amount of material or smell. That's what it looks like in the pouch. I'm going to put it in this little tray compartment. On first blush, it looks pretty creamy. You um, can see what appears to be oil, possibly butter, or something like that suspended in it. Little pieces of things that look like clams, like you might expect to find in clam chowder. Some celery, I think, is in there. Potatoes, obviously, I see potatoes. Lots of potatoes. I'm going to give it a smell here. Mm hmm. Questionable. Might be better if you put the Tabasco sauce in it. All right. Let's taste it. Definitely clams in there. A little bit sour, which I don't expect from clam chowder. I don't like it that much. Probably not going to eat any more of it. In its day, it was probably pretty good. But it does contain milk solids and they don't tend to hold up over time. I don't know whether they cooked this material in the pouch or irradiated it. Again, it didn't show any sign of being uh, infected with any kind of organism that would create gas within the envelope. But it just doesn't taste real good to me. My dad's family was from Long Island and grew up catching clams or digging clams and making chowder and he made a lot of clam chowder at home and it always tasted really good but this does not measure up to the way dad used to make it although it probably was pretty good in its day but I'm gonna give that a mm -mm -mm, don't want it this one thumb up this uh, orange beverage base two thumbs the cookie was two thumbs the wheat snack bread with the cheese spread on it was two thumbs. And we didn't try the hot sauce, we didn't use the accessory packet. The FRH worked just fine, although we did heat the pouches up in boiling water for five minutes beyond that. Alright, so once again, congratulations to Sam's Worlds of MREs for being the lucky winner of this Coleman folding camp knife. 
and uh, as soon as I get his address it'll be on its way to him. Again this is a liner lock knife, it has a thumb stud for opening. Pretty easy to open and close. Half serrated, half fine edge. Does a wonderful job of cutting, it's very sharp. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this review of the 2004 vintage Warnock Company Military MRE Menu Number no. 2 Pork Rib. And we'll see you next time on Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things. And you'll never know what's coming next unless you tune in. Adios, and stay safe out there.